Sometimes I need bread dough. Sometimes I don't. Instead, opting to do the roll-up procedure we spoke about last week week. Sometimes, in the worst of times, I do nothing at all. But what is the difference in the final bread and which method is right for you? Roll it! Hey home bakers, here's a loaf of bread that I made. I made it just now and I needed it in the standard way. Look at it. It's lovely and plump. It's a nice shape. It's golden and it's crusty. Let's have a look at the inside, shall we? Oh, I love that sound. Never gets old. Have a look at that. It's fine crumb textured. It's deliciously soft and squishy, it's nicely puffed up, everything I would expect from a standard kneaded loaf of bread. It has a little character inside with a slightly bigger bubble every once in a while, letting the person eating it know that, hey, I made this. It's functional, lovely, delicious bread, fit for my sandwiches and toast. It is a triumph. And here, look, I made another one, this time stepping away from the normal process that we all know and love. I'm talking about mix, knead, rest, shape, rest, bake. And instead, I ditched the kneading completely and chose to roll up the dough nice and tight at a few intervals during that resting process. Exactly like we spoke about last week. It's a similar principle, in fact, it's the same principle as the stretch and fold procedure, if you've seen that somewhere else before. I just choose to roll mine up. That's how I like it. It's a great success. Look at it, it's plump, it's puffed up, lovely. It's a beautiful, light, nicely shaped loaf. It is slightly smaller than that, just slightly, but otherwise, great success. Let's cut it open. Yes! Oh, it's light and it's soft, although it's not as soft as this one by just a fraction. It's kind of firmer texture, but with less bounce back to the finger. The one I needed is going to be chewier, that's for sure. Think about it that way. It's not as light. It's got this kind of tackier consistency that's impossible to show you, but I can certainly feel it. It's marginally heftier. Still though, I made an effort, albeit in a different way, to produce some kind of functional, lovely bread for sandwiches and toast, and I still cracked it. It's different. It's yet another true triumph to be celebrated. And here's a third. This one is the do nothing bread. No kneading, no folding, but instead clinging. onto the hope that everything will be okay in the end. I mixed it put it in the bowl, left it to puff up, and then I just come back to it, shaped it, puffed it again, and baked it. It is by far the smallest of the three, and it feels quite dense. I think I know what it's gonna look like inside, but let's cut it open and find out together. Yep. It's the densest. It's still puffed up, but it is the most dense of them all. The most tacky. I feel like it would probably crumble, yeah, and break apart quite easily with least resistance. This one I spoke about bounce and the chewiness. This one has got some bounce and possibly some chewiness, but this one kind of little bounce. It's kind of firm. It's got a kind of stiff patch there. I mean, it's, I could have done better. This is the classic, it will be all right, uh, approach to bread making. And you know what? It is just all right. Zero effort was put into this bread and does it show? Yes, it does. Is it still bread though? Yeah. Will I make sandwich and toast? Yes, it will. It's interesting to me that some of us have process driven goals and some of us have product driven goals. And as home bakers, trying to make bread in and amongst everything else going on in real life, it's our job to find the balance. 
On a week to week basis baking bread for my family, I'm the process guy. We're all busy to a certain extent and the process has to fit into my schedule. It's the practicality that determines my decision or whether I'm gonna need the bread dough or not. I am so that guy that often when I'm asked, yeah, but what's the difference in the final bread? I'm like, I don't know, who cares? Because fortunately for me, I have a superpower not a lot of people know about. I possess the incredible ability to be quite easily pleased. Although we all have our limits, don't we? At this end of the scale, in the know nothing bread, the effort, as little as it was in comparison to the other two, really, I don't think was worth it in the end. The product doesn't do justice to what it could have been, and it doesn't do justice to the process that it was, even though it was really quite easy. I may as well have put a little bit more effort into it by giving it a fold every once in a while, or even if I had the time for eight minutes needing, just needed it in the first place. Time well spent to get from there to there, or even there. You see, I do understand the idea of being product driven. And what I mean uh, is to be of the thought that here are the desired characteristics of the bread that I wanna make. I'm gonna do everything in my power to make that happen. The product, the result is the driving force in the decision of what to do. Some recipes in my book are made like that on purpose. The focaccia and the garlic naan bread recipes are both deliberately no need recipes in the hope that we can achieve that kind of open textured, lighter than air, fluffy, big bubble breads full of amazing character. You may get value out of kneading. You know that I do. I bang on and on about it. The pleasing, pleasurable nature of kneading. You may not want to, you may not be able to. The difference here between bread number one, the one that I kneaded, and the one that I folded is fine spun. But in comparison, bread number three, it's just laziness. And it shows. You can tell when little effort was made. You might be tempted in a busy moment to go with the, it'll be all right, know nothing approach. And there's value in going through with that because you'll discover the limitations of what you can get away with in making bread and what you really can't. On your journey to amazing homemade bread. And also you'll learn a little bit something about yourself too. You'll learn what is good enough for me, and that's a powerful discovery. So then when it comes to making a decision of whether you're going to need your bread dough or not, you can look at it in three different ways. You can look at the process, the practicality of the actions required regardless of the result, or you can look at the product, the desired characteristics of your final bread and doing everything that it takes to get there. Or you can look at a bit of both, a process that fits your schedule and your personal limitations in that moment, while also creating the kind of bread that you're delighted with that made all your efforts worthwhile. Wow, that took a turn, didn't it? Being a home baker is all about that balance. Otherwise, we would never do it. We would never make it, would we? We'd grow tired of it and fed up. If it's too hard to get into our schedule or if the product is rubbish, or both. Well, that would suck. Oh yeah, and don't forget, I'm gonna tell you every single time about the Home Bakers Club, an online learning platform that I'm building within bakewithjack.co.uk that I think you're really gonna like. It's gonna be like you can be at home and you can be baking bread with me at whatever time of day, wherever you are in the world, and it'll be like I'm in your kitchen and I think it's gonna be wicked. It's launching soon, or it may have already launched, but depending on when you're watching this video, so follow the link underneath and it will take you there. Thank you very much. I haven't got my remote control, so we'll just pretend. I'll see you very, very soon for another bread tip, and I hope you learned something. See ya. Beep.